So far we have discussed uh, many aspects of product technology and we have uh, considered how product technology is the core for uh, starting a startup and also enabling the startup to grow. In this session we will consider certain uh, strategic aspects related to the business because the whole idea of establishing a startup is to establish a business, a business which can be profitable, which can be viable and also which can be sustainable. And how is this accomplished? It is accomplished through what we call business strategy. What is the business strategy of a firm? Business strategy of a firm is a set of integrated actions which cover multiple domains in which the company operates and which are integrated into a very cohesive plan and which sets therefore the direction, the goals and the uh, various action steps that need to be taken by the company. The business strategy of a firm is typically developed to take care of the environmental opportunities and threats and also to uh, take care of the strengths and weaknesses of the company. The process of developing the business plan or the business strategy of company is called by various names. People call it long range planning, people call it strategic management, people call it strategic planning, some call it by corporate planning. But whatever is the name, the overall approach is one of uh, keeping a long term direction for the company, doing the strategy over a tenure of uh, 5 to 10 years depending upon the nature of industry and also making sure that uh, the entire organization is focused on particular uh, goals and missions of the company. Typically the first year of the business plan tends to be the budget, the annual budget which is much more fixed and much more uh, uh, robust in terms of the metrics and the evaluation criteria. This in a nutshell gives the components of a business strategy. I am not saying that business strategy is limited only to these aspects, but business strategy requires number of functional strategies to support primarily the product strategy, the technology strategy, the operation strategy, sales and marketing strategy, financial strategy and human resources strategy. And as this course progresses, I am very hopeful that we will be able to cover each of these uh, strategies also in some significant detail separately. But this session is about business strategy. Before we go into business strategy, I also want to talk about business strategy as contrasted or compared with business model. Many times uh, some people use business strategy and business model in a kind of uh, substitutional way, but actually it is not so. Business strategy as I said is a set of integrated actions which uh, tell the company how it should proceed over the long term. Therefore it is more directional in nature, it is strategic in context and also is somewhat uh, independent of day to day vicissitudes that could happen in the business of a company. Business model on the other hand is a method by which a company sets out to earn its revenues, earn out uh, its profits. So some examples of uh, business strategy are what kind of business our company should be in, what kind of strategies we should adopt and what are the metrics by which our long term growth can be measured and what should be the uh, shareholder wealth ma maximization strategies the company should pursue. But on the other hand, the business model talks about the specific revenue and profit arrangements. Do I sell my products through, let's say, franchising arrangement or through a consigning arrangement? Should I have an organic sales model or should I have a partnership model? Should I have certain days of inventories to be financing the sales cycle or should I do on cash on delivery kind of system. So business model is very specific. At the same time there are many similarities as well. A business model requires a business strategy to set the direction as to how the business model should be worked. Similarly a business strategy will not be effectively executed unless there is a very good robust business model to translate the strategic objective into model specific actions. Successful businesses require therefore very well aligned business strategy as well as business model. So having said this, let's uh, get back to business strategy. What are the basic questions that the business strategy addresses and a firm needs to know these answers as well. What is the business of the firm fundamentally? What kind of industry I am going to operate in and what kind of business I would conduct? Secondly, who are my customers and what are the markets? This is, uh, as we said, uh, is the core of startup development as well. Understanding the customer's innate needs, discovering a problem which probably even the customer is not aware of and pro providing a solution. Thirdly, what are the products the customer needs from the firm and what the firm should uh, aim to offer? 
and how should the products be manufactured what should be the cost and price of the products and how viable the entire operation of a business would be so these are the questions a business strategy tries to answer and the solutions are not easy they come from multiple directions and multiple disciplines and integrating all these aspects is the challenge the business strategist faces now defining the business of the firm this is the fundamental to establishing a business strategy in today's world where technologies are converging and also at the same time diverging defining the business at times is easy and at also it is difficult and the importance of defining the business is that if you define your business very narrowly that is almost uh, around a product then your degrees of freedom to expand the degrees of freedom to diversify will be very limited and you tend to get uh, straight jacketed into a particular product dependent business model on the other hand if you define your business too broadly you may be all over and you would not really know which kind of products you should get into the market and which types of customers you should serve so this is a, this graphic of concentric circles is very apt for this at the core is for example in the case of an automobile lineup commercial vehicle manufacture you can define your business as manufacture of commercial vehicles but then you can kind of expand your horizon a little bit more and say that what do commercial vehicles do for the customers they help the customers transport their goods or uh, transport their passengers by road so you can define the industry a little bit uh, broader saying that my business is road transportation on the other hand you may say that uh, these are the days of multimodal transport and road transportation may have its own uh, ups and downs so why not i look at uh, transportation as my business which means that the company could choose to be even in air travel it could be in uh, uh, rail travel and particularly with the trains getting privatized uh, it may people may say that yes this is a good business to enter why not, why should i be only on road transportation but then looking at the way the entire uh, concept of transport is getting turned around and mobility rather than ownership of vehicles being uh, important you may say that my goal of business is to be in the business of mobility therefore depending upon how you view your business and how you see the boundaries set by the industry your definition of business dramatically varies and when the business varies in terms of its definition the degrees of freedom to launch your products or to operate your markets also correspondingly varies so let's look at uh, this particular aspect in terms of one industry which is the road transportation industry when you say that i am in the road transportation industry how would i serve my customers would i serve my customers by offering light commercial vehicles medium commercial vehicles heavy commercial vehicles should i be only in the passenger vehicle should i be only in the goods vehicle and what should be the configuration of the chassis should it be a fully built vehicle or just a chassis on which the other manufacturers will build their bodies so you have a number of alternatives by which you can further subdivide your business in terms of the product configuration and as you can appreciate each of these product choices has uh, its own uh, customer requirements its own operational requirements underlying technological uh, uh, facets and why is it important to define this business properly because the strengths and weaknesses of the company or the resource capabilities of a firm may vary differently for example if you want to be in bus manufacture based on the chassis provided by a chassis manufacturer your investment requirements will be substantially lower and your market volumes will be lower but that is probably what a company could afford so for them defining the business in terms of the broader road transportation but more specific bus body manufacture could be relevant on the other hand a fully integrated highly resource capable firm like ashok leyland or tata motors could choose to be in all types of commercial vehicles and therefore meet the entire spectrum of road transportation and when you think about further uh, the companies may think about financing of vehicles and then uh, carrying out the logistics as being parts of their business so the target customers the target markets the segmentation vary differentially depending upon the definition of the business so the product strategy it drives the marketing strategy on one hand and also it drives the operation strategy on the other depending upon the product portfolio that is defined by the business your operational requirements also will vary however in respect of startup 
the flexibility to define may not be as great as it is for an established company. A startup must be very careful as to how it would uh, define its business. It should do it carefully and it should also do pragmatically. Typically also a startup does not operate within the confines of an industry. We have seen in our earlier sessions that verily the startup can create its own business, create its own industry. Therefore, trying to analyze a startup's business in respect of an available industry structure may be desirable in, at one level, but also is not very desirable in the other level. It should be very open and innovative as well as creative in trying to define its business. So, let us look at uh, the smart wearable. Suppose a startup decides that its business is in this smart wearable. As opposed to our earlier example of a commercial vehicle manufacturer where there could be several options and a company could straddle all the options for a startup it would be very challenging to be the in the entire field of smart wearable. Should I be in the smart watch industry or business? Should I be a smart glass company? Should I be in smart apparel, smart diagnostics, smart pen, smart X etc. So, each could be posing certain degrees of resource deployment and technological development which will be complete and full for a startup. Therefore, startup has to be very clear that yes, I am in smart wearable, but my initial business definition is going to be in terms of smart watch or smart glass for example. And that is because the technologies are different and the customer needs also need to be catered differently. But at the end of it, like in the case of commercial vehicles, the target customers, the target marketplace and the segmentation vary depending upon how you choose your product. I must also say that a startup does not need an elaborate business strategy and an elaborate business plan as a mainstream corporation would need to. That does not mean that a startup can ignore the principles of planning a business. One right product obviously makes the business and the industry for the startup, but at the same time the underlying principles of how a business will be driven by the product choice and how various functions should be got together to make the business strategy effective remain the same for a startup as well as for an established company. Now, let us try to build upon these concepts through certain examples. I would take the example of smart class or smart spectacle as I try to talk about development of a business strategy. As you can see the spectacle is a very common place product which is available for people for their vision correction. But on the other hand smart glass is a specialized tech based spectacle with specific objectives including but also other than visual support. The normal spectacles market itself is segmented depending upon the specific usage and esteem factors, but smart eyewear could take the segmentation even higher. So, when you look at traditional eyewear, you have vision correction spectacles, we have vision correction contact lenses, we have sunglasses for vision protection and also some people use uh, spectacles just as a fashion accessory. These are the four types of products and four types of segmentation that occur in a traditional eyewear. But when you look at the smart eyewear or the smart glasses, the segmentation could be completely different. One is improving. How do I make the spectacle more effective and how could I improve the usage and how could I increase the functionality of the spectacle and how would I make this smart glass applicable in different segments and in new applications. So, when we talk about uh, effectiveness, for example, if uh, the refractive nature of the glasses is varied depending upon the light conditions through which the person transports. You are going to change the effectiveness of the uh, smart spectacles. Similarly, if the smart spectacle is designed for reading at a particular distance and if he is keeping the book too far or too close, then you can say that you are going to get a notification and then he will adjust his uh, distance properly. Similarly, some a student is wearing a smart glass and then we have uh, discussions on certain reference books and it is quite possible that you will be able to read those uh, books on the smart glass simultaneously instead of going through a publication and then or reserving the issue for uh, late night reference later. So, the functionalities that could happen through a smart eyewear could be enormously wider and broader. So, it is a normally technologically differentiated product, therefore it could also be a disruptive product. So, we have a business strategy that could be developed for a very traditional product and it could also be developed for a very disruptive product and the principles are same, but the way the business strategy is developed becomes substantially different. 
So when you look at the eyewear market, it, you will find that the, it is driven by a certain scale and it is driven by certain drivers. Why is it important to a smart class manufacturer to study the classic eyewear market? That is because what you are trying to get is going to be a part of that. We have seen in earlier discussions uh, how flash disks or the memory sticks which came at one end of the market quickly occupied the entire market space by getting technological performance which is far superior and also cost uh, performance which is far superior to the traditional uh, computer storage devices. Similarly, you should understand what the total eyewear market is. We understand that the global eyewear market is about 108 billion dollars. So, we are talking about a market which is huge and the segments, the applications, the regions, the players, they determine the scale together. And what are the drivers? The aging population is one driver. The vision problems which people have irrespective of the age, this is the second problem. The weather conditions, the, uh, the sunny weather or the cool weather and the kind of uh, dusty weather, these are all uh, conditions which drive the usage of spectacles as well. And finally, you have the esteem users. So, we have on hand uh, scale and the, on the other hand the drivers which define the total eyewear market as 108 billion dollars. Now, when we say that the smartware could be a disruptive product, the business strategist has to understand, has to analyze the existing market structure and see where this product could be a disruptive product and how would he or she go about doing that and <coughs> market disruption. In any industry, there are <coughs> two areas in which you can look at fundamentally to understand the demand. The total demand is uh, an agglomeration of uh, demand from various regions. It is also an agglomeration of the demand for the products and the sub products. We have already considered that we have got three types of products in uh, spectacles. One is the vision correction, again subdivided into spectacles and contact lenses. You have sunglasses, you have fashion accessories, again which are plain and luxury. However, a smart glass must be developed to solve a specific customer problem. In which case, would I be substituting uh, which segment and how would I do that is the problem which the business strategists try to address. But to be able to do that, a strategist must understand the underlying technology in much more perceptive way than putting just numbers to a business plan. When you look at an armor glass, it is a simple product. You have a frame or the chassis just as an automobile has and you have a lens. That is all this uh, product has. Of course, the material of the lens could be of different uh, material characteristics, the frame could be of different characteristics, but not, not much is different in terms of the overall composition of the spectacle irrespective of the segment and the usage. But on the other hand, when you look at the smart glass, the delineation is completely different. You can see the smart glass as composed of two types of systems. One is the optical system. The second is the operating system. So, a spectacle does not have any of these things to be classified in this manner. And the optical system comprises the display, the camera, the lens to quote three important aspects. And we talk about the operating system, we have the frame which probably houses all the operating uh, modules, the sensors, the wireless modules, the processors and the batteries. So, Smart glass, although it carries the name from the normal glass, the composition of the product in terms of its technology, in terms of its sub products, the systems and the components is substantially different. It again demonstrates the power of convergence of innovative technologies. Quite possibly, smart glass may have competition from other smart wearable products as well. So, somebody who is developing a business strategy for smart glass cannot afford to be ignorant of uh, scornful of what a smartwatch could do for example. Therefore, one needs to understand what else is happening in the smart wearable stage and how these uh, operating systems and the optical systems could be made more competitive relative to the other uh, uh, smart wearable products. As I said when the spectacle is seen to be a simple product, multiple products also emerge based on the technology. We have got the prescription glasses which are defined as short distance and long distance, bifocals, plain UV product and looks clear tinted dark. But this is a rather easily definable uh, circumstance and we also should note that the 
companies engaged in these products have been trying to develop technologies con continuously. There was at one point of time no bifocal. You always had a separator in the lenses, but today we have got uh, bifocals and also bifocals designed for different uh, vision spectra. But that is a kind of limited product development. But when we talk about smart glasses, we may have uses across the industries. You may have the use in engineering, you may have the use in manufacturing, logistics, man infrastructure. For example, you are in a warehouse which has got uh, several stories of uh, goods stored. Your smart glass may help you read the, what is there on the top, the barcode very easily without really looking at the computer or doing something. So, that could be a probable uh, usage. Similarly, it could be useful in architecture to understand the kind of contours uh, that are uh, developed and uh, how they will be felt by the human eye and how could it be made more effective. And when we talk about individual, vision has been the traditional area, but content could be a completely different uh, set of uh, objectives fulfilled by the smart glass. Similarly, in terms of services, it could be in education and entertainment. Now, you have got a totally different uh, segmentation of the market, a totally different uh, product functionality set that is available through the smart glass. So, making a business strategy for a smart glass is a challenge. And if a startup thinks that I am just developing a product, probably it is kind of uh, understating its ability and if it says that I am for every smart glass application probably it is overstating its uh, uh, ability. So, somewhere the uh, golden mean has to be struck and to be able to strike the golden mean the business strategies has to understand the existing spectacle industry structure and strategy and also understand what all the smart glass can accomplish in terms of its underlying technology. As with uh, every product a business plan is built on four product market themes. One is existing products, existing markets. Therefore, you try to penetrate those markets more effectively and become a market leader. The second, you are strong in certain existing markets and you would introduce new products. And that is the second uh, more important way of uh, ex expanding your business. The third one is uh, existing products. You try to take them into new markets, which is the goal of internationalization of your product portfolio. And finally, new products and new markets. So, when we do the growth planning through a business strategy or a business plan, we try to map our product range in terms of these uh, four characteristics. And each characteristic has got its own cost structure, has also its own price structure. And the difference between the price structure and the cost structure for each of these grids provides you the overall uh, foundation for the viability of the company. And the more granular this grid is, the more uh, assured you are in ap approaching your future. A product plan also requires a marketing and distribution strategy. As I said, we will look at uh, certain functional strategies at a later time in the course and marketing and sales would be one of those areas under that we could look at distribution as well. So, when we look at the spectacle, how do I reach the consumer? You can reach the consumer through direct advertisement or you can reach the customers through the prescription eyewear approach. You can reach the customer through the online sales or through the offline sales. When you look at uh, established uh, optical uh, marketers like Turakia and other places and other leaders, you can see that they are offline uh, companies. On the other hand, when you look at Lenscart, it is a very strongly successful online sales platform that has uh, come up. And the more sophisticated the healthcare product, the smart eyewear becomes the greater could be the regulatory hurdles as a medical device that is also important. So, on one hand you can say that smart glass will occupy more spaces than ever imagined by the spectacle, but at the same time when it tries to accomplish more than that in terms of technology, it may be treated as a medical device and therefore, there could be other regulatory hurdles that the company would need to face. So, all of these act activities need to be understood and then uh, proper business plan developed. So, to summarize, the business plan of a company must guide the firm in terms of three basic parameters. One, what are the growth drivers for the company? What businesses I am going to operate in? What markets I am going to address? What products I am going to offer? And what would be the market shares that I could hope for? And the market shares could be substitutional or could be expansionary. That is, take away the market of the existing product or just add additional share by expanding the overall market. What would be the revenue and what would be the price structure? 
And secondly, what are the cost drivers? To be able to accomplish all of these things, what would be my investment costs in terms of R&D as well as facilities and what would be my operational costs? And as you can see from the model of, uh, let's say, lens cut, it has moved from an import dependent lens model, frame model to an vertically integrated centralized production and distributed online uh, marketing model. So there could be a different way of addressing the issue, but ultimately all of these things translate themselves into cost drivers and therefore it is important to understand the cost drivers. And the surplus that is generated between the growth drivers and the cost drivers, you get the viability of the company, what would be the profitability, what will be the return on investment. So typically a financial plan which is developed as part of the overall business strategy process is the capstone of the good business plan. But the financial plan alone is not the determinant. It can only be as good as the underlying business assumptions, as good as the functional uh, strategies. Therefore, it is very important to look at financial model as something which is uh, realistic based on a realistic business plan. So having said that, let's spend some time on the tools and techniques that support business planning. I would like to talk about seven or eight uh, tools which are available and as you can appreciate, understanding business strategy, strategic management itself is a full-time course and there are several reference works which are available and you would be well advised to look at them if you are more interested in developing the business strategy. But fundamentally, every company does this the first tool which is the SWOT analysis. What are the strengths and weaknesses that I have as a company? What are the opportunities and threats I face from the environment? So depending upon how we set the context in terms of our strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and threats, we will know how we can build the organization. How could I make my organization stronger? How could I build my business more uh, profound? And how could I move from just being a business to a larger corporation? A business plan will be robust only with a very solid organization plan that takes into account the company's strengths and weaknesses. There are many ways an organization can try to bridge the strengths and weaknesses a firm has. So that is the fundamental analytical technique which is available. It has been available for decades and it is getting a little more granulated. And uh, when you have your strengths and opportunities, when you have your threats and uh, risks, then there are certain ways in which you can try to maxi maxi or mini mini your uh, operational performance. So when you say that how would I exploit my opportunities using all my strengths, that is one way of looking at it. The other way is that how do I exploit my opportunities, overcoming my weaknesses, that is the second way of looking at it. Then how do I overcome the threats I face utilizing the strengths that I have and how would I cope with the fact that I have got certain strengths and unfortunately I also have got certain weaknesses that puts this firm in a very vulnerable situation. How would I protect my business to be able to be out of vulnerability zone of this particular combination? So this tools analysis springs from the strengths and weakness analysis and instead of just stating the strengths and weakness or opportunities and threats as just kind of laundry list of items. This tries to marry the strengths and uh, weaknesses, opportunities and threats in a kind of logical way of addressing those uh, four factors. Then we have the pestle analysis which talks about uh, uh, political, economic, social, technological, environmental and legal or regulatory aspects of the business. This is a little more uh, expansive related to the understanding of environmental uh, opportunities and threats. One thing I would need to talk about here is that many times when we see that the company needs to take care of this legal environment, the company needs to take care of the political environment, one would really need to understand whether it is due to the factors per se or the management and the leadership of the company itself has led to this. For example, you talk about a telecom company which is facing grave uh, pressure on its operations due to the need to pay up uh, uh, AGR dues which are there for uh, several several years and uh, the operations being vulnerable. But when you see it in current context and if the business strategist draws up his business strategy for the firm, he will say that these are the pestle factors and the legal regulatory framework is very daunting and it has got a strong influence on the course of events in the company. 
But if you really hark back to the older times, why did it happen? It happened because of somewhat uh, misreading of the market developments. The company did not read the environmental uh, opportunities and threats properly. The move from 2G to 3G and then 3G to 4G was delayed for whatever reason. Similarly, the marketing effectiveness was uh, blunted and also even though the company was contesting the AGR dues, it did not provide for an adequate buffer for it to be able to cough up the dues if there were to be a kind of legal decision in favor of uh, giving up the dues. Therefore, you can trace the strength or the dominance of these special factors to the dominance or the goodness of the leadership that exists in the company. So, business strategy is a good technique, good methodology to understand the company and plan the progress of the company. But again, nothing substitutes good leadership and good management in making sure that the company is able to progress in a good and uh, prudential manner. Another tool is the Porter's uh, Five Forces model. Anybody who understands strategy or who addresses strategy uh, understands this model, which talks about the threat of new entrants, bargaining power of customers, threat of substitute products or service and the bargaining power of suppliers. Now, how would you understand this? If you are a kind of spectacle manufacturer, obviously threat of new entrants could be the smart spectacle, which could be entering the market. But if you are seeing from the viewpoint of uh, the smart spectacle company, what is the threat you are having? You are not having any threat. So, while this model is good, you need to adapt this model and contextualize this model to the specific requirement as you may have. And also, from the time this model was first prescribed, let us say in 1980, today the situation is completely different. You may say that the economic forces that are operating in the world order, those forces are uh, dictating the industrial forces in a much more uh, uh, differentiated and impactful manner. Therefore, we also have a five economic forces model which we think is very relevant now. The first threat is the threat of inflation or deflation. If the economy inflates or if it deflates, there is a particular type of industrial force that gets generated. And if the global liquidity exists in certain countries and that liquidity can flow to our country but also flow out of our country depending upon how the opportunities and uh, reward mechanisms exist in other countries, then there is a bargaining power that global liquidity has. Then you have got the bargaining power of national technologies. Today, we understand that certain nations uh, have certain advanced technologies in their uh, uh, midst and uh, those technologies provide uh, the bargaining power. Like you want to modernize yourself with uh, high speed trains, certain technologies are available only with certain nations. So, there, there are bargaining powers associated with those national governments. At the same time, a country such as India can offer the power that the ma national market provides. Therefore, there is that power which we are having within ourselves. So, how all of these things um, bulk together and create an alchemy of uh, national rivalry and how do you analyze that and how would you really fit it with the Porter's uh, five forces model which is very industry specific and which is also very competition oriented. Whereas, uh, we, when we talk about these things, we move the needle from competition to collaboration. How do we collaborate with different national contexts? How do we kind of navigate through the economic forces and how would we achieve our goals? Then we have the BCG matrix and the profit impact of market share matrix. Some of these are very elegant from a kind of structural point of view, but in again in today's situation, it is very difficult to define purely in terms of the earnings potential or in terms of the market share potential, what products to be had and what products need to be divested. BCG matrix, for example, talks about the market share and market growth and uh, those which have got high market share in high growth markets, they are the star products. And if uh, the market growth is low, but still the market share is high, you have cash cows, then there are question marks and then there are uh, products that need to be divested. But then market share and market growth would not be the only criteria in today's uh, world. For example, you look at Toyota's uh, product lineup, price as a hybrid model has been uh, languishing in a low growth market and also in a low market share uh, situation. But that does not mean that it is a product that had to be divested. In fact, that is the niche product that needs to be built for the future. So, when we apply some of those techniques which are in a way dated to the 60s and 1970s, we need to be really respectful of the role of technology in influencing strategy. 
I mean, product development cycles are no longer uh, going on for years. Model years change every half year in today's circumstances. To, so to apply these kinds of uh, models, we need to be very cautious as to in what context we will apply these models. Similarly, uh, just because the market share is high, we cannot assume that the profit share is high. If you are operating in a generic product, very, very well you must, you must need a high market share. That does not assure you high profitability because the commodity market is uh, highly generalized and you operate on thin margins. So, these are useful guidances, but at the same time we need to apply the technological dimensions on these uh, grids and see how they can be used by us in our business strategy. Then we have got a cage which Professor Pankaj Ghamawat has proposed. And he says that the internationalization of our manufacturing capabilities or internationalization of our market needs cannot be just a product market match. It is much more than that. You have got the cultural factors, the administrative factors, geographic factors and the economic factors that determine. So it does not mean, for example, if the geography is next to you, it is that the internationalization takes place. If the culturally, the countries are different and economically and politically the countries are different. Probably you need to look at an 8000 miles distant land rather than 80 miles uh, cross border uh, opportunity. Therefore, uh, what factors impact the internationalization, how each industry is impacted by these uh, factors and what kind of trade can take, take place depends on the cage framework or analysis of beyond product factors. Then we have got this blue ocean strategy. Again, I would say that uh, some of the strategies are useful for startups, some of them are of academic interest. Probably blue ocean strategy is very useful for the startup because it talks about creating a completely new market space, completely uncontested market space and that is what a startup tries to do. It tries to create through its product a market which has not been there. So there is no red ocean as far as the startup is concerned and it does tries to do it ahead of customers and also it tries to redefine the cost, volume, value, price relationship in a completely different way. Only a pioneer can do that and when that is done this uncontested market space together with the redefined cost, price, value relationship, the startup can say that yes, I am the sole sailor in the blue version of opportunity that exists. So to sum up, to drive growth, business strategy needs to be driven by four very important aspects. While understanding that the product strategy is critical to business success, we should also understand that that product strategy to, has to be technology driven. It cannot be just improvement driven. Secondly, while understanding that solving a customer's problem is vital for building a business, we should understand what really customer centricity means and how would I really understand the customer's needs. We talked about design thinking, working with the customer, staying with the customer, ideating for the customer's needs and that is what needs to be done to be the foundation in terms of the customer centricity to the business strategy. Then we also saw that there are bound to be strengths and weakness of an organization, there are bound to be opportunities and threats and the challenges of developing technology, developing products getting into the markets is not a mean challenge. Therefore, we need competencies. The organization has to have organizational competencies to manage these uh, growth drivers as well as the cost drivers. And finally, there is nothing like uh, in these days, sustainable competitive advantage. However nice the term is, it is difficult for a company to have by a set of strategies, a sustainable competitive advantage which will help in the long term also. So, the competitive advantage has to be continuously reinforced and we have seen uh, through certain examples how good leadership and good management is essential for the company to take advantage of the festival factors very effectively and also minimize adverse festival factors as it goes on. Therefore, competency building through good leadership and management is very important for a company. So, to drive growth business strategy needs to have these four foundations and also four driving anchors. And typically the stages in uh, developing a business strategy and business plan are as follows. First you do a SWOT pestle review, then you set the vision, mission and goals. If you are doing the business strategy for the first time, probably you will do these uh, activities for the first time, but if it is a recurrent business strategy exercise, you reaffirm or fine tune them. Then you analyze what are the strategic options I have, how do I define my business and what are the boundaries of the industry I should consider. Then you get down to the product market matrix, the four 
uh, grids which we talked about. Then on that basis you develop a product portfolio strategy which you try to convert into an operation strategy and from the operation strategy you move on to the marketing strategy and to be able to do all these things you require an organization which can drive the entire uh, spectrum of activities. Then you understand the costs and prices of uh, doing this because uh, organizational costs are also important element of cost and price analysis. Many times uh, companies try to do a material oriented cost and price analysis, but that is not enough. We need to understand the total organizational expense and then drive the cost and price analytics. Then you get into the business model, which is uh, further evaluated through a financial model and you freeze the business plan. So this is the integrated framework you would have to develop a business strategy of the company and develop an accompanying business plan. As I said, a startup may not require a completely detailed and elaborate business strategy and business planning exercise as an established firm would need to. But the principles are the same, the guidance mechanisms are the same, the tools and techniques that could be used are the same and the learnings that come from a business strategy exercise are also the same. Therefore, the startup also must master the art and science of developing a good business strategy.